Now, if you perform a careful observation of the world around you, you'll notice that much like this picture, everything is strangely interconnected. Upon closer examination, you'll see that the same likeness is in every experience. Every thought, emotion, and action has this uniformed reflection. And that, of course, would be you. The world has always been expressing you as a spiritual soul in a plethora of material forms. Everything you experience, everything you interact with is the world reflecting you. And it's doing this extremely well. So the question then becomes how to use what's working. If it's already working in reflecting you, how do you more consciously participate in this process? Because everything in the material world is doing what it's supposed to be doing in expressing you. So how do you partner with that? And step one is consciously pushing your ambition into the world. Ambition is spiritual. And we all know this because when you were first born, from that day that you were first born, you had this sense of your potential, a destiny, something that you were here to do. You couldn't always express it, but it was always there because it was spiritual in nature. It had no mental, emotional, or physical form yet, and it's your responsibility to push that into those forms so that it can impact the world around you. And you have really two options. You can either be kind of pushy or very pushy. That's your option. You're a soul, you're a spiritual creator, you have a mind, heart, body, and you need to push your ambition into your mind, heart, and body. And you can choose which of these two courses you prefer to go with. After you start pushing your ambition consciously, then you realize very quickly that you need to help translate that. Because if you go around telling the world you're gonna change things and make the world better, you very quickly realize that no one has the faintest idea what you're talking about. Because you need to translate this spiritual ambition that has no form into something that makes sense to the world around you. In human translation, we make this very complicated, but we can see the basic elements here. The first thing is there needs to be a project manager. And that, of course, would be you, your soul. And then around the project manager are all these specialists uh, that are gonna make this translation come about. For you, fortunately, you already have all your specialists. Your mind, heart, and body are the specialists who will translate your spiritual ambition into unique material expressions. They already know how to do all this. The only problem is they don't know you well enough. You have to let them explore you, ask questions, and really dig into who you are which is gonna require you pushing your ambition on them, getting closer, touching and experiencing and thinking and feeling and acting with them so they really can understand who you are so they can express you more effectively to the world around you. But that of course requires you entrusting your ambition. And this gets very personal. Uh, this purpose of yours, this destiny that you've always wanted, it's something you clutch deep down inside. It's yours. It's, it's, it's something important to you. And to entrust that to your mind, heart, and body, that gets tough. But you have no other choice. How are you going to get your ambition out to the world? Can you do it without thoughts, emotions, and actions? Of course not. So you need this translation team. And working with them requires trusting them. And when the moment comes where you reach the pinnacle, where you've achieved all that you've desired, if you notice here, there's only three figures. Symbolically, your mind, heart, and body. Well, where are you? Well, you're actually not there. You're a soul. You're a spiritual being. You have no material form. You can't hold the money. You can't embrace your loved ones. You can't revel in the glory. All of those things stay in the material world. Creation is the one who basks in all this material glory. You're the spiritual creator. You remain behind the scenes, and it gives you delight that your partners, your material partners, get to relish in this wondrous creation that you instigated. If you notice, that's how God interacts with the world. He is the spiritual creator and he gives us all this joy and wondrous participation in his creative processes. So you get to experience that. You push your ambition like he does. You allow them to translate it into the world, your mind, heart, and body, much like we do with God. And then you have to trust them in bringing forth your ambition, much like God trusts us. So creation, not you, benefits from the material expression of your spiritual ambition.